<laughs> you're in like half your. Well, at least you're like you know, kind of sort of in focus and shit. <laughs> yeah. But okay, so we got we just got done watching Godzilla: King of the Monsters. Yep. And uh, holy fucking shit, was awesome. <laughs> um, I don't know what the hell's wrong with uh, all these critics. They're like, this movie's fucking terrible. The humans started it. The humans don't mean shit. Exactly. Godzilla. So no, they do Godzilla's not. right in the title. They don't. Mean in fact, anything. I'd have been happy. I'd have been even happier if, like I said, it was a half hour of humans and an hour and a half of monsters kicking the shit out of each other. Mm -hmm. But from what we got, it was awesome. Um, uh, yes. Tom, Tom and me are like crazy <laughs> friggin' fans. Yes. And Holly's the layperson. This is like pretty much the the first Godzilla movie she's ever seen. Yes. So she's going to talk first. <laughs> yes. Will, and then we're going to squee out. Yes. I will be representing all of you people out there who yourselves are going to see this because it's a big epic blockbuster monster movie and you have never seen any Godzilla movie before. Maybe you're not familiar with it to the to the extent that, you know, Uber fans are. <laughs> so I'm, I'm that person in the car. I'm the person who knows nothing about this. I'm just talking about the movie in general. I would not hate on this the way critics have been, but just speaking for the movie in general, I can at least understand where a lot of their criticisms are coming from. I would say, as they those said... Fight, those fighting words. <laughs> well, hang on. Well, let me finish. I agree that the humans in this movie are absolutely pointless. They don't mean anything. You don't care about any of them. They try to set up this whole subplot about a family and broken up family and they spend the whole movie searching for their daughter and you don't give a shit about <laughs> any of that. Um, I would say every single line of dialogue with the exception of maybe one or two is expositional. Everything that anybody says is meant to serve as exposition to explain things. This is what happened. Let's go here. Yes, and exactly. They, they a lot of times, done. characters will say things that they're doing out loud <laughs> as if they're narrating the movie for the blind. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Or the un okay, yeah, yeah. Some of it, some of it is for people who aren't like me and Tom. Yeah, some of it is, but some of it is just you can see what they're doing, but they're going to say it out loud just because. Um, <laughs> I lost my train of thought now. Um, I would say a good 10% of this movie, and again, the nerd, the uber nerds will love this, <laughs> but just as observation, a good 10% of this movie is glory shots of the monsters rising up out of shit, and another 10% of this movie is slow motion zoom in shots of people reacting to them rising up out of shit. Yep. <laughs> um, but the rest of it is just a chaotic, uh, epic CGI fest of monsters kicking each other's asses. And for those of you who are coming to see that, that's exactly what you're going to get. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, that right there. Uh-huh. That's, that's, exactly. that's what I paid to see the last movie. Yeah. And um, I swear to God, dude, man, at the very beginning, of it, I, I, I think they kind of did that to kind of like be like, okay, yeah, we get it. You guys didn't like this. When they were showing like the, the clips of God the, the, of the fight from the past, it was all on TV. Mm -hmm. I'm like, if you motherfuckers do that shit again, <laughs> you're going to have a damn riot on your hands. But I think they kind of just did that as like a little nod to like, yeah, we realize we screwed up. <laughs> so, that's, but. That's how we shot the last movie. But mm -hmm. yeah, that's, it, it's. It, it was freaking awesome, man. Mm -hmm. I, I really liked uh, the way they got them to, to fight each other. Because it wasn't just like, oh, he just right. randomly right. wandered in here. It was like, no, they were fucking looking for each other. Yeah, the setup mm -hmm. is good. Um, the, fight, the fight scenes are good. Mm -hmm. You can see them. Yeah, yes. e even though they're in the dark, it's mm -hmm. like... It's just dark. It's not pitch black. It's it's mm -hmm. Yeah, it's dusky dark. It's not mm -hmm. like you can't see. And not, not, not only that, but... They're not so close that you can't see what the hell's going on. Right. Uh, there were a couple of close. There were a couple of scenes where they showed them like from the ground level, and, and yeah, everything's they, chaotic. They showed them from the position of people like being underneath them yeah. while they were fighting. Those were actually really cool. But yeah, I was gonna say. But even though they were doing that, even though they were kind of chaotic, you could still see what was going what on. Was what? Yeah. So, learned your lesson well on this one. And before they get too much, <laughs> before they elaborate even further on this. I will agree with all of that. The fight scenes were awesome. 
uh, a lot of the angle shots that they went for, a lot of the ways in which you see the monsters fight were very interesting ways of framing it. I thought they were really cool. Um, I did recognize an element that I myself, when I am an uber fan or nostalgia blinded by something, I will forgive things that I couldn't not notice in this movie because I didn't have that uber fandom or genre, you know, blindness where I'm just willing to forgive stuff. So there were parts where I found myself thinking, you know, a 90s computer, like a computer from the 90s that operates on big yeah. floppy disks that you buy at a garage sale would be, would have, would operate, would, would operate more reliably than any of the technology in this movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every single thing breaks down in this movie conveniently so that characters have to, like, nobly sacrifice the themselves thing. or go yeah. do the thing themselves. Somebody, somebody's got to MacGyver some shit together. Things work only until the plot needs them not to work and then they don't work. Everything like shield protection just breaks down immediately, which was um, which was <laughs> funny because it happens like like she's not kidding. It like happens immediately. immediately. It's like we don't know what happened. It's like well that was pointless. Yeah, uh, weapon systems that are needed to deliver things that break down. Everything's damaged. Doesn't work. It's like oh. Star Trek when the transporter doesn't work whenever they need it not to. It's it's like that. Like all the technology is worth shit in this movie. <laughs> Although, the, the best example of this I think is the. Oh, the hangar bay doors are broken. They won't open. Hey, I'm a behavioral scientist. I'll go fix it. I'll go yeah, fix it, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, the, the local courthouse that you have in your neighborhood has more security than any of these big military I know! Operators. I'm like, after the, after the first time that that crazy shit happened, we're not going to go into it because I don't want to spoil too much of the movie. After the first time, they'd be like, okay, Nobody gets in until we got, we're changing all the passcodes. We're heard, changing everything. Have you heard of lockdown? Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> how the hell, man? I mean, I don't know why that little girl was allowed into any of these places to begin with, and then all it takes is swiping somebody's bed. Yeah, exactly. It's like, the, it, was, it was take your daughter to work day. <laughs> not only that, but it's like Charles, Charles Dan's character. Charles Dan's character is probably going, going like, this is the worst goddamn security team I've ever seen yeah, in my goddamn exactly. life. But. But so it was those little things that I know from having watched pre other movies that I was an uber fan of. Those are the kind of things that you notice, but you forgive it in favor of all the stuff that you love. Yeah. yeah. But because I don't have the kind of love for this whole mythology that they do, it wasn't as I couldn't turned as blind of an eye to it as they probably could because I was noticing it all throughout the movie. Not to mention that the dialogue in this movie <laughs> it's bad. makes makes uh for all of you who have bad things to say about the original independence day fuck y'all because <laughs> this movie throws it out of the water this <laughs> movie makes independence day look like an academy award winning screenplay <laughs> yeah it's, the, the the dialogue is pretty like like uh, it's very it's very cliche yes cliche with a capital c yeah. There are so many things happening in this movie and things people are saying in this movie that seem straight out of other movies that were cliche when they originally happened. And then to see them happen in this movie, you're like, wow, they're doing that again. Okay. Pretty much. <laughs> but again, the reason why it doesn't, that we don't care is because yes. it's, the humans don't fucking matter. They, in don't. This, they really don't matter in this story. At all. Yeah, I kept thinking to myself, you could take the humans out of the... They, they serve one purpose, and that is to be a catalyst Target. for the release of all these monsters. The humans are responsible for releasing all these monsters. That is their only function in the story. One human in particular yep. who is responsible for all of this. Yeah. <laughs> she did it all. <laughs> well, not only that, but like you could actually... In all honesty... The, the humans are only there to facilitate them waking up yes. now. Yes. Because they're already slowly waking up yep. anyway. Right. So this is literally just, we're just going to hit fast forward yeah, on this shit. Gasoline on the fire. Yep. That's all yep. the humans are. That's literally yeah, all yeah. the humans are there for is like to, 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 to kick this Roman candle off. Honestly, the biggest thing for, for my nerddom and nostalgia and the things that I've loved in the past, my biggest <gasps> moment in this movie was... Oh, Bradley Whitford's in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I loved that. I was like, oh my God. It seemed like he was playing a twin brother to his character from Cabin in the Woods. 
Yeah. <laughs> Which I really liked. <laughs> and I, 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 I know it, and I'll be honest with you, even though the the, the, com- the, the comedic lines he was delivering, like you said, they were pretty cliche, yes. he delivered them really well. Yeah, he He, he was actually enjoyable. Yeah. The, Who's the commercials the... kind of... Uh, I, I, I really didn't... I assume you're talking about the, the sound guy. Yeah, the scientist. The yeah. guy's like, I record everything. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. him. Oh. From the commercials, I'm like... I am so going to hate this character. <laughs> am, but the commercials are completely misleading about him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he, he, yes. He's a much better character in the movie than he is in the commercial. So I, I, I gotta, honestly, gotta I didn't mind him. I didn't mind the, the Sprint cell phone dude who was the... Uh, the he was the... the um, um, Ken, Watan, Ken Watanabe's uh, assistant. The guy the guy with the beard. Mm-hmm. He's the guy that does those... Uh, like, like those... Uh, I think it's sprint commercials, mm-hmm. but even he's not, uh, honest. But honestly, like the reason why I didn't mind everybody is because they didn't freaking matter. Yeah. Um, speaking of, which, <clears throat> do you know the name of the actress, the short-haired Asian girl? Um. Yeah, that's Zheng Ziyi. Okay. Uh, her character completely superfluous in this movie. Most of the uh, glorified slow motion reaction shots I was telling you about, most of them belong to her. It's okay. just slow motion zoom in of her she's, reacting to stuff. She's not superfluous because when you see, because Tom, Tom will know this, the person who is her sister that you see uh, that one shot of when she watches Mothra being yeah. born, being yeah. uh, coming We're out of her slow, second uh, slowly and You know who that was supposed to be, just... right? You know who that was, right? Hmm. From the '90s, from the uh, '90s and the 2000 uh, series of Godzilla films, she was the she was the psychic. Oh, the psychic. She was the Mothra. She was the one that was connected yeah. to Mothra. Okay. That's her. Okay, so oh. she serves as an Easter egg in this yes. movie. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. That's, that's her purpose, and to, and to have nerve slow moment motion, number one slow motion reaction shots of her. Um, but other than that, like, just being excited, like, hey, Bradley Whitford's in this movie. I, I'm hard-pressed <laughs> to think of a movie I don't love him in, so I was really excited to see him in this. But well, everything else is basically from a from the perspective of someone who's not familiar with all this like they are. If you're going into this without any prior knowledge, then a lot of the corniness and cliché-ness will probably hit you a little harder than it would somebody who's an Uber fan like them. You will notice that. But if you're going for really cool action and monsters fighting, it doesn't have a lack of that either. So nope. you're going to get that. Yep, this one's got the monster fights in it. Yeah. Yes. Although I would like to point out that the whole, oh, it's broken, we must... We must fix it. We must do it. The Are, other way yes. now is not a trope of Godzilla movies. No. No. no it's that's just a trope of movies, time. period. Yes. Yeah, this it is, exists everywhere. Yeah, this is... This is the first time that's really because usually what it is is ah oh, we've got this thing oh Godzilla broke it you yeah. know it's more of that like ah oh, we can defeat him with oh nope he broke that too yeah mm-hmm. yeah it's usually well, like what about we, this? we oh, have this yeah. new weapon that does this and then it goes there and they do it and doesn't do like, shit what <laughs> what yeah really? that's what you got he's like I got I got, I got a little tummy ache <laughs> I got <laughs> a little gassy give me a little gassy wait for a that. minute let me. Um, this is going to okay, seem like yeah, a okay. very bizarre connection, but uh, the manufactured existence of all this technology they have that does all these things mm-hmm. actually reminded me of a line that Rob Lowe had from the movie Thank You for Smoking, where they were trying to get around um, having cigarettes in movies, and he said, oh, we'll just say, you know, present in the future and say, thank God we invented the whatever device. Yeah. And that this movie is filled with whatever devices. Yeah, Whatever devices that um, enable them to do all sorts <laughs> of shit. Including, <laughs> including, including the giant, including the giant jet airship that, like, there's no goddamn way that thing's gonna fly. Right. That thing well, would have to refuel every like five minutes. It would have to uh-huh. refuel every five minutes, and it's the size of a freaking skyscraper. So it's like it's like the shield air. It's like the shield yeah, carrier, carrier yeah. without all the Stark tech. Mm-hmm. So it's like, all right. But <laughs> although this this movie also would like to point out has a real Michael Bay sense of time. Yes. 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 Thank you for bringing that up. Yes. I was going to mention that too. There all, is all nothing. of the monsters, even the ones that can only walk, suddenly can move. It's super. They can, tel- yep. they can teleport. Well, Everybody well, teleports. Well, well, it's the underground tunnel thing, man. It's the Hollow Earth thing. <laughs> I really, <laughs> I really wanted to shoot. <laughs> okay. Oh well, yeah. 
Okay, so thank you for bringing that up because that was another one of those things that I did notice over the course of the movie. And I'm not just talking about the monsters, the people too. Yeah. There is no passage of time, sense of passage of time in this movie. The characters will be somewhere and say they're going to do something. And in the very next scene, they're where they said they were going to be and doing what they said they were going to do. And you have no idea if it's been minutes or hours or days. You yeah. get, but because you don't know and it's never stated, you get the impression that this entire movie takes place over the course of a few hours. Yeah. Because everything happens instantaneously. People go from one location and one task to a completely different location and a completely different task from one scene to the next. Well, literally. Quit, like, you know, hey, hey, hey. Quit nitpicking the shit out of my movie, well, goddammit. Nitpicking, I'm just pointing out, like. Pointing out we observe. I know, when, I know. Uh, when, it, the, when the storm is moving. Yes. And I'm looking at this going, you know, this thing's traveling at about. Oh, I don't know, fifteen hundred miles, miles an hour. hour. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And then this looks at it and goes, That storm shouldn't be moving like that. I'm like, no shit. Um <laughs> literally just, thirty I seconds just, ago it was over Florida. This, now it's pushing on to Mexico. And now it's and in DC. Now it's in DC <laughs> and it's yeah. like but uh, no, this movie's got like a it's got like an Empire Strikes Back sense of time. Yeah. It's like shit just it's we yeah. this scene requires this to be here, so this is where we are. Yeah. Um, like that woman when she goes to chase down her daughter. Where did she leave from? And then two minutes later, she's driving up like, get in! Well, not only that, but <laughs> how her, her, her daughter's on the outskirts. She's not even in on the outskirts of the city. Right. And in the next scene, she's at Fenway Park. Right. Mm-hmm. It's like, what the hell, man? Yeah. Like, this kid is like the Flash. Yep, but again, this all falls under the umbrella of stuff that if you're super geeking out over the monster yeah. fights, you're not going to care about I didn't about give that. a fuck yeah. about any <laughs> shit, by the way. None of it. Yeah. Every, every like, okay, oh, so anyway, here. yeah, what's well, because we got three people breathing heavy in here, so. <laughs> Roll, crack a window. <laughs> Get, get some oxygen in here so the camera doesn't fall out. Anyway, um, all right, now onto the, now onto the fan shit. Yes, go ahead. Um. Holy frickin' hell, it was awesome. So, oh, yeah. well, what, well, what, what are we actually going to say here? Because there's a lot. All right. Say one, okay, here's, here's a, the first thing I'm going to say. Of the, of, the, of the three things that I had, I said I absolutely had to have, I got two of them. Well, I got two and a half of them. So, <laughs> there. Um, one, I got a lot of monsters fighting. I didn't get as, quite as much as I wanted, but I got enough. And... Two, three, uh, secondly, well, two and a half, uh, one and a half, you can see it all. So, for the most part. Right there. For the most part. Yeah. And then the third thing, we got Akira Fukube's original march from Godzilla. Yep. And that was and, really and cool. The and, and the Mothra. Uh, and the Mothra song as well. They well, did a and, really cool. They did a really cool thing. They they did a, a nod, and and the other thing too is you also had the Godzilla theme too. Yeah, not just the march, but you had the theme <clears> and the Mothra song, and then the cover of Godzilla by Yep, Blue, uh, the Blue Oyster Cult song, but it was from a different band. Right, that's mm-hmm. over the end. Credits, so, so all the things that we were always like, you know, this is the perfect moment for you to do this. Mm-hmm. Okay, it happened. We actually got it. Like the perfect moment for that friggin' for, for the Godzilla's march to come up. It came up, and I was like, "Holy shit! They're actually doing it!" I was, I was literally like, "He was, he was." I was sitting behind him. He was literally pumping his fist in the air. Yes, he was. I saw that, dude. I was, dude. I was going, dun 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 dun. He started rocking back and forth to it. So, so, yeah, um, lot of Easter eggs in this movie. Holy crap, a lot of Easter eggs, and they set up kong versus godzilla mm-hmm. big time i don't know four five six times Dude, the entire yeah. <laughs> the entire like um scene before the credits mm-hmm. when they're showing like the news clips, news clips. Yeah. two-thirds of it was it's, this is happening on skull, skull island, island. Yeah. all the monsters are going to skull because i think what it is is skull island is the new birth island skull island is the new monster island by the way yeah. for, for people who weren't fans Birth Island and Monster Island are the same thing. Oh, oh wait. It's where all the monsters live. Very important because this is where this information comes from. For anybody who's going to see this who hasn't watched the movie yet, if you're going to go see this movie, stay through the credits. Yes. There's a lot of people who are sitting behind this who just left and they missed two credit scenes. There are two credit scenes in this. Yep. And a lot of the information they're talking about comes from these credit scenes. So stay through the credits. Not just the beginning, but the whole thing. Yeah. Okay? Just got to say that. Yeah, there is two... There And, uh... 
don't want to tell what say what the credit scene was, but yeah. well, it was the end scene and the after credit scene. Yeah, it was the end scene and the after credit scene. But there was a they allude to a lot of the they allude to some of the other Toho monsters as well. They they alluded to Manda, the sea serpent. Mm. Um, I saw a couple things that could allude to, um... Although that's, that's one thing, though, is the thing with the tusk, the big elephant thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You could have gone with anybody else that we know. <laughs> you know what? I, I, here, here's what it is. This thing. I know why they did that. Um, the deal that they have with Toho... Lord of the Rings? What? Yeah. <laughs> that's what Lord of the Rings? Yeah. yeah we like, did a big <laughs> elephant thing with tusk. It's an old defender. <laughs> um... It's yeah, basically, it's a giant friggin' mammoth. But yeah. the with reason no, why... No snout. Yeah, with no snout. It was just yeah. weird. Mm-hmm. But the reason why they did that is the deal they have with Toho is they have to pay for each monster separately. So each monster that they use... So we should have had a Deadpool moment in this. It's like, oh, like they could only afford four monsters. <laughs> yeah, pretty, pretty much. Yeah, it was... They, like, 17, they basically went, four. okay, what are the biggest <laughs> monsters that Toho has? Besides Godzilla, you got King Ghidorah. King Ghidorah, Mothra, and Rodan. Those are the four biggest. Yeah, those are the big ones. Like, and that's why they used them as... I would have loved seeing a Gears in this. That would have been... That's, that's, who I, that's who I thought was coming out of that mountain. Yeah, out of Munich? Yeah. yeah. That's who I thought was coming out of that mountain. And that would have been perfect. Eyeball, but... Perfect to come yeah. out of that thing, but... Well, that it... was something I wanted to ask the two of you. Because as somebody who isn't familiar with mm-hmm. this, I wanted to ask if the end shot where all he's, the he's surrounded by all these other monsters, are they just ones they made up for the movie, yep. or are any of them, like, recognizable? The, o- the only one that's recognizable is one that they created themselves, and that's the Muto. There's another Muto yeah. there. Um, none spider- of the other monsters are any of the other Toho monsters. There's a spider-looking no, the thing. Spider one. The, no, no, the big spider thing was... Um, it's still a big spider thing. It, I don't I, but know it had, like, a Cthulhu be. head thing yeah, on it. Yeah, kind of. So change, change 20% and... The copyright. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, it, yeah, it definitely wasn't Kumongo. Um, Kumongo's the giant spider in Toho. Um, no, the, the other two, I don't know what the hell they were. And then, then well, the mammoth thing. Yeah, yeah. and then there was just like a mini Rodan. There was like another thing that looked like Rodan without its wings. It had the same shaped head and kind of a weird looking <clears throat> body. That's the Muto. That's the Muto? Yeah, that's yeah, the Muto. Okay. That's the monster from the first movie. And, and the male. It was the male, which I'm like, um, how is that thing? Is that another one? I guess <laughs> another one just showed up. Shit, I guess. But, yeah, so Godzilla, Mothra, King Ghidorah, and Rodan are the only the Toho one. monsters that were in this movie. Well, which, standard issue which you know what? Monsters, I'm cool with that. You can introduce the other ones later if you want to, like... If, if this movie does well, if this movie, yeah, see, I really want Angris too. If this, Angris, the two that I want more than anything is Angris and Gigan. I want those two. But, you know, like, if, if this movie does well, if Godzilla vs. Kong does well, which I get the feeling we're going to get a. Couple extra months. We might, get, we might get a couple guest appearances in that because of, like I said, things that happen in the stuff. Um, I'm curious where they're going to go with that because Kong Skull Island set up Kong as not a bad guy like he was the good guy monster of that movie and Godzilla is the good guy monster of this movie so it's like Batman versus Superman now like you're pitting two good guys against each other well (laughs) I think I think the whole eco terrorist thing is going to how they're going to facilitate that they're going to do something that because because the thing about Godzilla and Kong is they're both really territorial Mm -hmm. and like and Let's be honest, Godzilla kind of does look like one of those things that came out of the ground. Yeah. So Kong be like, like, oh, you're a big one of those things. I'm going to fuck you up. Well, and if I remember correctly, in the movie, they stated that he wasn't <clears throat> even fully grown. He was oh, like, no. He was an adolescent. Yeah. And that's the, the thing, time. because the, the version of him that was in that movie ain't nowhere near the size yeah. of Godzilla. He's so he's, more squid. Yeah. He's had decades to grow up since yeah. then. Yeah, <laughs> so this one's had... Yeah, decades to grow up, so that'll explain why he's at yeah. least close to the same size now. Because mm-hmm. he's even bigger now at the end of this movie, Godzilla is, than he was at the beginning of the freaking movie. Which is something, that's another callback to Godzilla versus, um, which, which one was it? Godzilla versus um, Mecha uh, Ghidorah, when they hit him with the nuke, and it 
Remember, remember when uh, they uh, they hyper evolved him and he got even bigger. Uh, remember, because remember that was the one with the. Okay, here's some dumb. Here's some dumb crap. That's the one where the people went back in time and they stopped oh. him from being created, and then they yeah. created him again by accident. But it wasn't an atomic bomb that created them. It was a nuclear bomb. It was a much more powerful weapon. Hydrogen. Yeah, it was a hydrogen bomb. It was a much yeah. more powerful weapon, and then because of that, he was even bigger than he was before. That's the reason why he kicked the crap yeah, out of the door. That, that whole plot was really weird. <laughs> yeah, they kind of do something like this, but it's more along the lines of he's he's hyper evolving to yeah. fight Ghidorah because mm -hmm. he was already because, because they said that, like they're, they're, like he's regenerating. He's he's basically evolving. He's so regenerating, that, but this is going to take too long. Let's yeah. just push him along. Yeah, that's, that's literally what the humans are there for, yeah, for everything. Nice we're, here here to hit the, uh, we're here to hit the fast-forward button yeah. on everything. And I will say, as somebody who... Like, going into this, I knew who the principal monsters were. I knew their names. I knew what they looked like. I knew some basic <clears> information. <throat> and even though Godzilla is the good guy monster of this movie, I gotta say, the way they presented King Ghidorah, he's friggin' awesome. Like, even his yeah. gl his glory shots, I didn't mind because, my God, when he's like with the full wingspan and the lightning coming out of him, holy there's... shit. It's like, I I was kind of sort of rooting for him yeah. <laughs> just because I there's... didn't want him to die. <laughs> there's a reason why Ghidorah is Godzilla's most popular. Oh, I'll bet. Most popular enemies because he just, he, he, he just looks cool. His design is just badass. Yes. And I really I really like the, the fact that even though they did update all of the monsters, they were easily recognizable. Yes. Yeah. Um, like Ghidorah's head, it's the Chinese dragon head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the Asian dragon head. Mm -hmm. Like they could have done something weird mm -hmm. and give him like a weird arrow shaped like Muto head or something yeah. like they did. They're like, they're, nope, he looks like the Asian dragon and it was freaking awesome. Mm -hmm. He even had the frills on his neck and everything. Yeah, he's just updated. He's not <clears throat> yeah. new and improved. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. it's... They the, and, and in fact, I would have to say the the two monsters that they probably updated the most were Godzilla himself mm. and Mothra. Yeah, Mothra they updated her quite a bit, and I I do know I do know one thing. I know that Mothra fans, because Mothra fans are some crazy rabid people, <laughs> mm -hmm. they're not going to like a couple of things. Yes. Yeah. Because they kind of incorporate some things into Mothra that aren't moth related. So they're going to be like, um, excuse me, sir, <laughs> this is unacceptable. I want my money back, and I want this movie reshot. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm making fun of other nerds because <laughs> I have the right to do that. Um, but other than I like the update for her because it made her look badass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, she looked like she could kick, like, without having, because oh. obvi obviously they're not going to put the weird antenna rays in. Yeah. Okay. Or the ninja star thing. Yeah, any know. of that kind of stuff. But the weapons that she does have are like the natural weapons she does yeah. have are pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And the the and the, her the redesign move was awesome. Yes, it was. Yeah. Like she like she straight up took told it's, Rodan it's, what was up. Yeah. Like Rodan was like, Oh, oh I done screwed up. <laughs> um which uh, I and, Oh I, I I see what you did there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Excuse me. Um I and I really like I really like that they didn't go with the whole fire Rodan thing. That he, now he does have he's, he does have kind of like a firebird thing going on. Yeah. But it's more of a he's just hot. It's just a natural <laughs> biological thing rather than he's shooting a beam out yeah. of his mouth. Because mm -hmm. um, in the updated again the updated version of Rodan, he actually has his own breath weapon. So, um, but this version, I dude, especially the scene where he's rolling. Yeah. And he's taking out the jets and shit. I loved that. That was freaking <laughs> Thank awesome. Thank you for mentioning that. I was going to bring that up. I was going to say that Rodan is actually pretty damn smart in this. Yeah. Because he, he's, at, there's a scene where he's surrounded by jet fighters who are all trying to take him out. And he just, with full wingspan, just spirals around several times and just uses his wings to just take out everybody that's surrounding him. And I was like, God damn, that's pretty smart of him. Like, that was a pretty genius thing to do. That is yet another thing. That makes him, like you said, Tom, the star scream <laughs> of this movie. Because oh, by the way, I stole that. So oh, where'd you hear that first? So that's from uh, the, uh, the Black Nerd. Okay, all right. I, well, right. Yeah. Props to the Black Nerd. Yeah, that's an awesome freaking line, man. Because <laughs> Star Scream, 
I mean, I mean, even called him Starscream now. <laughs> Rodan, <laughs> as badass as Rodan is in this, when it comes to between him and Gadira or him and Godzilla, he's a little bitch. <laughs> like he's immediately like, yep. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, who's who's winning? Who's, who's in winning? charge? Like yeah. I'm following you, whoever's in charge. Yeah. He's like, who's in charge? Uh, okay. Um, Who just kicked my ass. He's like, he's, he's like the little dog in those cartoons. He's like, hey Spike, what are we doing here? Hey, what are you doing? Hey, Spike, what are you doing? <laughs> that's that's Rodan in this movie. Yeah. So, so I did notice that there's a scene where he just like he'll follow whoever's winning at the moment. Yeah. But, I was, even sitting there watching it in the moment, I remember being really taken aback, like really impressed with his spiral move and how that took yeah. out everybody. I was like, that was a really <laughs> smart thing for him to do. And not only that, but he's so much freaking bigger than he was in yeah. the other movies, man. And like, the, like you get the sense, like if, if this thing comes flying as fast as it can down low on the ground, yeah. exactly what happens is going to happen. It just yeah. creates a vortex behind him and destroys everything. Yeah. Like like a nuclear weapon shockwave. Yeah, and the, that, that was the cool thing I liked about this is all of the monsters, you could feel the weight. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like, they're, they have mass. And it's yeah. like, when they're around, everything's getting broke. Yes. And, when because like when he did that spiral thing, he, he skims the water. Like yep. That was really cool. I'm like, holy mm -hmm. crap, man. But, I, I, by the way, oh my god, the friggin' other water fight. That was so friggin' badass. Because it's like, Godzilla's like, you're my world now, bitch. <laughs> but, and then, because the thing, and, and, yeah, I'm not gonna go into that because I don't want to ruin it, but it was friggin' awesome. Speaking, um, speaking of everything getting broke, that was one of the problems, because everything just gets decimated in this movie. And the movie asks you to care about one family in particular <laughs> while millions of families are being killed oh while these God. monsters well, are that's, fighting. That's the thing. I, I was like just waiting for the little girl to look at her mom mm -hmm. and do it. Cause she did the line about, Oh, well, do you think this is what Michael really wanted? Mm -hmm. I would have just like, you just created over half a million Michaels. I hope every mother tears you apart. Or just yeah. re re like the, the okay, so we had to restart the, because yeah. we had to restart yeah. because we talked too long and it went a half a freaking hour. I'm about to edit the shit out of this. All right. So, as, beginning of my sentence again. The the main female character in this, the woman who plays the mom. I forget the actress's name. Vera for for many, uh, Vera for Vera for uh, 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 Yeah. She is the one who wants to release these monsters because she thinks that in the end it's better off for humanity. That humanity is Which destroying is the itself. Dumbest and, yes, idea ever. I, you see that in the trailer. But then she spends the rest of the movie, like, uh, every member of the family, her, her ex husband, and her daughter, spend an inordinate amount of time longingly staring at a picture of their family with their uh, the the little brother little that brother they, that yeah the son died. that they lost Spoiler alert. and then they spend the rest of the movie either she starts regretting what she did even though thousands upon thousands of people are already dead like what did you expect oh, to happen that like, whole, that whole everybody left in that town that didn't yeah. get evacuated by that little bit of friggin military that was there right. they're all freaking dead yeah, exactly. I'm talking tens of thousands and, of people are dead. And then they're and then they they enlist the military to help them find their daughter. And I'm like, how many soldiers have died on this quest? <laughs> like, how many soldiers died just because of this lady? Late? Because because of well, their we we have to go get our daughter. Our broken machine. We got to find that too. And they were together. Yeah. So. And that well, that was there was one scene where. They're in flying into the middle of Godzilla and G King Ghidorah to go f find Madison. That's the girl's name. Yeah. And as soon as the back of the plane opens, like three soldiers immediately Good get pride. disintegrated. Yeah. At that point, like, I'd be like, nope, nope, nope. Sorry for your luck. <laughs> like those three guys died to save this little girl, but it wasn't just those three guys. <laughs> it's thousands of people who are dying you know, all in the quest to unite this not one to family. Not to mention all the freaking monsters that are just rampaging all, all over, over the, the world. That are killing everybody yes. in their path. We've got something better to do at the moment. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, like survive. Yeah. Screw you. Screw your kid. You started yeah, this shit. Exactly. Peace out. 
I love Charles. Charles Dance has a moment where he basically looks at the little girl and says, "What did you expect was going to happen?" Yeah, and that's a perfect. He should have said that not just to the girl but to the mom as well. Like when the mom was like, "Wait a minute, they're not going to save the world. They're going to destroy it." What did you think was going to happen anyway? The thing, because <laughs> you find out that she knew that that was her mom's play, even though her mom's like, yeah, "It's going to hurt a little bit." I was like, "No." No. Billions will die. Millions, <laughs> billions will die. It's like, you, nobody in this movie is a hero. No. Except for Ken, Wata, Ken Watanabe. He's the only one in the guy, person in this movie who's a freaking hero. It must be done. It must be done. Don't try to stop me. And I'm like, all right. I'd, I'd be like, all right, dude. No time to argue. And that's the one time nobody argues. <laughs> yeah. Like, no time to argue. This must be done. But the dad is, the dad's an asshole. The mom is a bitch. The uh, kid with is a capital B. The yeah. kid, oh my god! I mean, the <laughs> opening scene where where they release King Ghidorah, her ex husband and her child, not to mention countless military personnel, are there, and the act of releasing him is going to destroy this whole place. Which yeah, is they're all going to die. All people die. Like it's a, it's by sheer luck that her ex husband and her child didn't die during that. Which, by the way, they never showed how that didn't happen. Right. Because he just wakes up in the hospital bed, okay. so it's like. Well, they show him like getting. What, knocked, it's, it's, he gets knocked unconscious. Do, do, do. He, gets, he gets knocked unconscious, and then he sees. Yeah. And, and then he wakes up. And he a just wakes bed. up. But yeah, she, 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 she's, she's like. Bloop. Yeah, she she activates this kind of like explosive that explodes the ice that releases King Ghidorah, and by doing that, all of the military structure that is surrounding where he is, not to mention her family who happens to be there at the time, they'll like, die. You, you see it all getting destroyed. It's just by sheer luck that that the people closest to her, her ex-husband and her child, don't die during this. But a lot of other military personnel do die during. This. Not only that, but the 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 people from Monarch. Mm -hmm. When they go to the base, they straight up murder those people. They straight yep. up execute them. Yeah, and those are all people that she knew. Mm -hmm. She helped daughter. put that program together. Yeah, it's like, eh, you can't break an album without breaking some eggs. Mm -hmm. Right. You know what I'm saying? Just look straight ahead and breathe. Look straight ahead. I'd be like, oh, you are you are beyond evil. Yes, she is. You... That scene where they're about to fly away in the plane and the dad is still on the ground and the daughter's like, we can't leave him, we can't leave him. And she's just activates the machine to wake Ghidorah up, knowing that it's going to mean death for everybody on the ground, yep. including her ex-husband. She doesn't care. Which, oh my God. I will say this. the one The one thing that made me say, okay, with that whole scene, with that whole situation, was the one trope that there. There's a trope that I, I I can't go into it because it'll tell you exactly what happens. But there is a trope that dictates that when you do something like that, a certain thing has to happen to you in this movie. Mm -hmm. Well, that certain thing happens. Yeah, I had no sympathy for her at nope. all from the very beginning. As soon as she did that first act of like releasing Ghidorah, regardless of how many people died, I was like, and okay, I'm I was like, shooter, shooter. Yeah, I yeah. don't shooter. care. I was like, I don't care what happens to you from this point on. And after, be after the behavior of the dad and the daughter is revealed, I didn't care about any of them. Nope. Ken, the only I the only person I was actually upset about was Ken Watanabe, and I'm like, yeah. you gotta kill him. And that happened, come on, man. Right, and, so, and that only happened because of a stupid equipment breakdown. Because nothing works uh, in this movie. No technology <laughs> works in this movie. Everything's damaged or broken or breaks down. Like, so in the first movie, in the first movie, we lose Brian Cranston, yeah. and we get we get bargain bin Channing Tatum for the rest of the movie. <laughs> and then in this one, we get we lose Ken Watanabe. And then we get drunk dad who doesn't know how to do his shit, and his and his evil wife, evil wife, and and their dirt daughter. Yeah. Instead, I'm like, no, no, let them die. Let Ken live. Mm -hmm. Although I did like the one the one thing that's in the previews that I just did like so much is when the little girl turns around and smiles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, when when Big G shows up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was like, I was like, oh, okay. yeah, because because that's exactly what everybody else in the theater did at the same time. Because they were like, oh, your ass is done now. <laughs> yeah. Although that was a nice shot, it came again right after another slow motion turnaround. Like there, <laughs> yeah. there's again giant Godzilla monster just going to turn slowly to look at him. Slowly <laughs> I turn. But yeah, the, the, step by step, step the entire, inch by inch. <laughs> the, entire, the entire movie from start to finish asks you 
to care about this one family that we're following, despite the fact that millions of families are dying yeah. all over the place. And not, besides, <laughs> and the fact that they do such awful stuff. It, by, by about a third of the way in the movie, yeah. you're like, I don't care what happens to any of these people. Yeah, the the main woman, Vera Farmiga, she's, she's responsible for 90% of the horrors that happen oh. in this movie. So she... and they, yeah, because here's the thing. At least, um, at least uh, Charles Dance. At least he knows he's a bad guy. Yeah, you know? he, he, was, he he was. He what said, "What did you think would happen? What did you yeah. think was going to happen?" Yeah, yeah, he's he, like, "It's like I'm an eco terrorist." Yeah, he knew what was going to happen, and he said, "You called me." Like, so she mm. actually ha- called. She him initiates to come all in. yeah. of this. Yeah. But yeah, so. Yeah, where they're were we? Happy family. And, uh, yeah, for about thirty seconds. I just, well, like, I I just gonna... grabbed my daughter and gone, arrest her, <laughs> dude, dude. That's what I was thinking the whole time. I'm like, you, you know, you're going to prison for the rest of your freaking life if you don't get executed by another country or something because of what yeah. you've done. It's like exactly. you're, you're, you're done. There's no happy ending for these people. The the fact that she has regrets or second thoughts at a certain point, I'm like, uh, no, fuck too you, late. too little. <laughs> yeah, too I'm late, like, late. I'm like, yeah, you should, you should, you should feel <laughs> awful. You should this, feel like the worst human being on the on, on earth because you are a humane execution. Yes, <laughs> not even doing. that to me. Like to me, that made no difference at all. I was oh like, my God. because. Oh, what? So slightly more people are gonna die than you thought were gonna die? Like, <laughs> I'm a, this is gonna be funny. Okay, so uh, Pat Oswald has this bit where he's he's talking about he was he went and saw uh, Jerry Maguire with his brother. Yes, and, and there's a scene where his uh-huh. brother comes and goes, "Fuck you!" When she does that thing, she goes, "Hail to the king!" That's immediately went through my head. It's like, oh. Fuck you! It's like, yeah. You don't get to have a cool moment like that. Right, you know, exactly. sorry. No. But, um, okay, so, yeah, this movie was awesome. Uh, critics can, you know, they can go suck the pipe. They're full of shit. <laughs> well, bear in mind, though, that a lot of those critics who can suck the pipe, they're full of shit, are also people who probably are not uber uh, Godzilla fans who don't know all the backstory mythology, so they're noticing all of those things that I mentioned yeah. at the beginning excuses, of this review. Excuses, excuses. <laughs> so they're not, they're not willing to set aside all of those things just in favor of geeking out over the monster fights. That's where a lot of the criticisms are coming from. But if you're somebody who is just here for the fights, then you don't pay attention to the critics because you're going to get what you want. Yep. Yeah, it was awesome. I, although I stand by that. It's <laughs> awesome. If you don't think it's awesome, you're wrong. <laughs> Bring on Kong versus Godzilla. Yes, I do want to see that. Des- and despite everything that I said that bothered me, I am still look. I st- there were still so yep. many things that were awesome about it, and I'm looking forward to Kong, the next Kong Godzilla monsters movie. Monsters punching monsters. To those people who said that stuff, educate yourself first. Then, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> you, you, you're not allowed to have an opinion on something if you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. All right. Hello. Another quick stolen line. Um, okay. When Ghidorah came up out of the ice. Yep. Mm-hmm. And the soldiers are there, and they're like, bang, 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 bang. <laughs> you don't even know I'm here, do you? Bang, 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 yeah. bang. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's machine guns against a monster the size yes. of a skyscraper. That'll now, work. I am not as big as your two. Yeah. <laughs> Trigger happy soldiers too. People who are supposed to be highly trained and have cool heads in dire situations, just shooting the shit out of things. That's another <laughs> trope that you see everywhere, but, but, and but, it happens here. To too. be to be fair. Every Godzilla movie has that, man. Yeah. Where they're, they're, they're all like, this will work somehow. You're get them right in the tear duct. Yeah. <laughs> It'll annoy them to no end. All yeah, right. Pick that yeah. one out. But I liked the movie. Tom yeah. liked the movie. We all liked the movie. Yeah. We thought it was great. Bring on, bring on Kong versus uh, Godzilla. And yeah, go see this movie. It was awesome. Yeah. And stay through the credits. Yes, stay don't, through the credits. Don't be one of those idiots who but, gets up and leaves. Thanks for being here for our review, our long, meandering, 40, 42 minute long review. <laughs> Hopefully, we didn't ruin, we didn't spoil too much of it. I don't think we did. I don't think we did. We just but, talked about certain scenes, but we didn't say any of the big yeah. uh, things. If you like this, uh, if you like this uh, content, you want more of it, hit the like, hit subscribe, leave a comment below, and we will see you guys in the, what is the next movie? Uh, Holy I shit, I don't, I don't, I don't think there's any, oh, Spider Man. Spider-Man's coming out. I think Spider-Man... Home... Uh, Spider-Man Homecoming. Homecoming. <laughs> 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 the re-release yeah. of Spider-Man yeah. Homecoming. I think the next Spider-Man movie is Prom the... Night. 